One of the most commonly asked questions I hear is, what should I charge for my real estate photography? I'm gonna share the process I went through to price my services and some mistakes I made along the way, and hopefully I can save you from making those same mistakes. The first thing I did was Google other real estate photography companies in my area. Most of them had their pricing right on their website. Most of them were within $50 of each other, so I had a good idea of what real estate agents were used to paying. I also realized that most of the photographers were charging different rates based on square footage. I think this is a pretty widely used pricing model in real estate photography, which makes sense because if the house is larger, you're spending more time on site shooting and probably more time editing because you'll have more photos. So I decided to price my services pretty low because I was just starting out and I thought this would be a good way to get my foot in the door. The two most successful photographers in my area were charging $165 for their base price. I decided to start my pricing at $135 because I was brand new and thought this would give me a better chance of getting my foot in the door. Here's what my pricing looked like when I first started my business. This pricing seemed to work out well. I was able to get some clients and had a good first year. Then there came a time when I wanted to raise my prices. I wasn't sure the best way to do this, so I started gradually. I only raised my prices $10 that second year with no complaints. Then I became so busy and my name was out there as one of the go-to photographers in my area, I wanted to raise my prices again to be on par with the other photographers in my area. I raised my prices $20 this time, but only on the first tier of pricing. Here's what my pricing looks like today. There were only a few agents who were not too excited about the pricing change, but overall, I haven't had too much of a problem. So when you're pricing your services, my advice is it's okay to start lower than other companies in your area so you can be more competitive, but don't be so low that it will turn people off when you wanna raise your prices to meet your competition. A good strategy is to raise your prices in smaller amounts until you're on par with other companies in your region. A big price spike might have a negative effect. Another pricing mistake I made was with my video service. I provide walkthrough video tours, and when I first started, I looked at what others were charging and stayed in that price range. I got quite a few shoots. Then I noticed that my videos were way better than what others were offering. So I decided to raise my prices dramatically. I think I went from charging $300 to charging like $1,000. I ended up getting a few shoots at that price, but not nearly as many as before. It was just too expensive for getting consistent jobs for my market. I have now adjusted my pricing to still be higher than my competition, but because my quality is better, people are willing to spend a little bit more. Don't be afraid to charge what you think you're worth, but at the same time, don't price yourself out of the market. You may be the best photographer ever, but agents are only going to spend so much for photos. My strategy is more based on volume of shoots. I want as many photo shoots as I can get. If I can get 10 properties averaging $200 per shoot in a week, I just made $2,000 that week. Another strategy is to focus primarily on luxury properties. Some photographers charge more per photo shoot, but do fewer listings. This is a little tougher to get into because usually you have to have a pretty good reputation and a lot of luxury real estate companies already have preferred photographers that they use. That's not to say it can't be done, but in my experience, it takes more time to get in with those types of places. One final tip on pricing. Agents will ask for discounts, especially when you're new to the industry. You'll hear things like, if you do this shoot for me for free, I'll introduce you to so many other agents, I'll get you a ton of business. Or, we've never worked together before, so let's do this shoot for free, and if it works out, I'll continue to use you. I would be suspicious of these people. In my experience, they never live up to their end of the bargain. Use your instincts. I can usually tell when someone's trying to take advantage of me, but it's still hard to say no. As your business grows, it will be easier to tell agents that you need to charge them because of how busy you are. But always be polite and gracious even if you know someone is trying to take advantage of you. Thank them for their willingness to help, but you can't offer free shoots at this time. So to sum up this lesson, research your competition, price slightly lower, and gradually raise your prices as your business grows. You'll most certainly make mistakes along the way, like I did. But those are just bumps in the road. Move on and do better the next time. So that's it for pricing. Let me know if you have any questions and remember, Keep shooting.